All right. It's a new week. It's been a while. It's been far too long. Varun, I cannot believe that we haven't instantly done an episode on Sora. Let's just get into it. Just roll the packaging. I want to talk about Sora. Okay. What the fuck? Are our jobs in danger? This is too good. <laughs> it's too good. It's really yeah. I think I think this is the mid journey moment for video. Yeah. You know what the cool part was? The minute Sora came out, the Imad who's the stable diffusion guy, he put out a tweet saying, "Hey, we're going to get this to be open source in a bit." And now I think they've done some collaboration recently where they're trying to get the new stable diffusion stable diffusion 3 which i applied to be on the waitlist i haven't got it yet but i think that this is going to be open source pretty pretty soon in fact the rate at which open source is going it's almost like they're edging out like somebody like google or uh, openai who puts out a waitlist and says you know you wait for sora for xyz number of months before that open source sort of catches up because the paper comes out first so we know that sora uses a diffusion transformer and the minute you know that everybody else is like okay let's let's get in on that mix So I I I love where the world is going but also it is a little bit scary because it's like well what next yeah i'm on elon's side sue sue them <laughs> sue sue them okay so when we first saw like runway pika we saw all of these and they all at that point which is like 4 months ago which feels like years ago now they all were impressive but sora actually legitimately takes it to the next level this is like all the other video generation apps look like mid journey v1 v2 sora feels mm-hmm. like v4 like it's here this is really high quality images and the distinct if if you looked at it randomly uh you would not be able to tell like there's a video of let's play that video now which is a formula 1 driver going through san francisco like that you cannot tell you absolutely cannot tell yeah You know the 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 thing isn't that Sora is good right the thing is AI is evolving so fast in 6 months Sora is going to be somewhere else right and there's going to be like a bunch of open source tools that come out and do this better right you know many um, months ago varun many months ago we discussed video fidelity and AI text to video okay actually if we can find that clip can we roll that clip here like it's just frame to frame consistency is so hard it's such a hard problem it's an unsolved problem it'll get solved someday so there is no frame to frame consistency where you had said that it's hard to solve for fidelity in video yeah. um how do you fucking explain this you told they, me my job of... was safe <laughs> yeah they got a lot of compute see the the main challenge with video is processing of video is expensive right so now what they're doing with sora is they've introduced a new technique called patches um this didn't come from openai this came from another team but they introduce a vid- uh, this process called patches so they're breaking down videos into patches so it's a brand new technique uh although frame to frame consistency is not like fully solved like if you watch that video of that grandmother you know sitting and blowing birthday candles you look at the people at the back there is a lot of rubbish going on but 6 months from now i think it is going to get solved right or maybe a year from now it's going to get completely solved right even if you see that alien walking through san francisco or they they made it walk it walk through some street right If you look at the alien it looks very realistic but if you look behind the alien whenever there's a character that passes behind the alien and I saw the same thing with stable video diffusion as well right whenever you see a character pass behind the alien and the alien moves the character is now different so if someone goes out of view and then comes back it's a completely different thing that's coming out so I think film directors uh might not be completely okay with it because they're like characters are disappearing appearing it's very easy to tell especially if it you know it's on a big screen But that being said, six months from now, a year from now, this is this is going to see a lot of progress. Um, one thing, though, which you know, will probably you 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 can be a little bit more comfortable with your job because of this, is that it's very hard to kind of get two generations where you only want to change one thing. Because they showed a demo where they showed a car going through some place, and they said, "Well, give me the same car, but change it into mountains." the background to mountains give me the same car but change it into you know some futuristic synth wave environment but if every anyone noticed the car changed like all the cars are different even though they're the same red car it's like there are differences in the car the difference in where the lights are placed etc etc it's like those subtle differences where you're generating the entire world again right like a sort of um 
seeing what's in the frame and saying, I'm going to regenerate this, there are always going to be slight differences. So any director who wants to shoot a shot of, let's say, Alia Bhatt going to the left, picking up some coffee, drinking it, putting it down, he still can't do it very accurately with this. And the longer your prompt, right? Like you, you made the Johnny Sins ad. That's a very long prompt. It's very hard for you to give Sora a prompt and say, hey, I want this entire thing done. And it generates exactly that. You know, a lot of the fascination with really cool video, like for example, you take Mad Max. Okay. Like a lot of the fascination for, fuck, this is impressive, is the fact that you knew that this was made. So you, at the back of your head, the effort that has gone into making it kind of contributes to the viewing experience. I'm wondering if that will remain with AI, because with AI, um, there's, you're always circumspect to, okay, how much was this, um, like how hard was this really? Like with Avatar, James Cameron literally spent a decade inventing a thing to make it look like another thing. So there was still like, this awe and appreciation for it. Uh, so I'm, what, what do you think? Do you think appreciation for actual filmmaking will still be there? Um, like uh, that movie that uh, Richard Linklater made uh, about the boy, he followed someone for 12 years and then recorded their whole life effectively. Um, that was again, high effort cinema. Do you think that that charm of being impressed with just with the effort of filmmaking that contributes to the viewing experience, will that still exist? Let's talk about fiction for a second, okay? Um, I think, let's say Sora gets to the point a few years later where you can generate an entire movie with it. If you're talking about pure fiction, then Tanmay, you know this better than anybody. It's all about high quality writing. Because you need to prompt Sora, right? You need to prompt basically every frame of Sora or every, you know, scene of Sora, right? which technically ends up with you generating a script. Now you could take the lazy way out or the convenient way out and say Gemini or uh, ChatGPT is going to generate that script, but everyone knows you want control, right? ChatGPT doesn't have as much cultural context of India. It wouldn't have been able to write the Johnny Sins ad. Yeah, but maybe right Krut Krutrim could have. <laughs> uh, unlikely, but the point is, uh, you still need a very high quality script and you need to also be very granular about what you're writing in the script. For example, if you have a character and the character is wearing like a red kurta, you need to be very specific about the red kurta, the, the detailing on the red kurta, maybe send it a bunch of images of what that red kurta looks like. So what you're doing, writing that script, I think to be very honest, that's been the hard part of making a movie, you know, because shooting like technically, yeah, you, you know, you can hire people, you can also do it yourself. But like writing is where most of the meat and the magic is. And technically, when you use tools like Sora, what it expects is a prompt. And the shorter the prompt, the more it makes shit up. Right, it, the more it fills stuff up with stuff it wants. My problem is Sora right now, even with high quality prompts, what I've seen, MK MKBHD put up some videos, right? Dog's legs are merging into each other and all, that's fine. I think those will get solved. But the problem is it's still, it's not exactly what he prompted it, right? Like the three, like he prompted a 3D printer printing something and it's not exactly what he wanted, right? At least from that prompt. So it's making stuff up, it looks very good, but it's not your vision. The gap between what's in your head and what comes out of Sora is maybe 50, 70, 80%, right? Uh, which I don't think most directors would settle for. So I think it's all about high quality writing. And ultimately, you're going to watch a movie for the writing, for the storytelling. And I think the visuals, it doesn't matter as much as the, uh, if the story is really good. If the thought behind the story is really good. It's, it, yeah, you know, I mean, it all comes down to story and characters and the emotion behind everything. Yeah, like I don't think effort is ever rewarded, right? Like in any in any field. Like I'm sure there are movies with like 10 years of effort, but like 10 people watched it. Right, and yeah, at the same time there are lazy rewarded, movies. Yeah. yeah, and there are lazy movies. Like there's this movie called Man From Earth, which I really loved. Which is like all happens in one room, right? So it's like I don't think effort is ever correlated with the success, commercial success or audience love for a movie. Uh, I think it is storytelling. And I think storytelling still requires you to tell Sora exactly what you want. And if you can tell Sora exactly what you want in the real world, what a director does is tell the team exactly what they want anyway. So all that's happening is uh, you're sort of the director to team communication. You're sort of making that an app, right? In, in the form of Sora. That's what I think. Now tell me in images, if I ask, if I ask mid journey to create a purple colored, cute looking dog. Yeah. 
uh with big eyes long bushy tail and just have this creation going on in the background big eyes long bushy tail uh with a yellow colored uh scar on right above his butt yeah in 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 images once i pick this character can i generate many many images of the same exact looking character no doing not multiple yet. things not yet no not yet but at some point it will be sorted because i'll tell you why why this happens right with images there's something called clip i'm not going to get into the details but what happens is if you're taking an image and you're generating another image like that image with the same character or whatever what ai does is first it reads the image tries to understand the image so you send it an image of this scene it'll be like okay this this frame right it'll be like okay there's a tv in the back there's a guy uh he's whatever color he's wearing two rings he's wearing a watch so it's compressing what is a very complicated scene into text it's making it a prompt and then it's re-inputting the prompt into mid journey again to generate something similar that's the problem it's not understanding every single detail of the frame it's using text as the medium and that's lossy and you lose a lot of information when you convert something from a video or an image into text uh but at some point and there's some technology like style tuner and stuff right where it seems possible for you to have consistent characters and a lot of people claim they have consistent characters and i'm i've seen many stable diffusion like on comfy ui i have many different stable diffusion um packages that sort of create consistent characters but they're not really consistent if you look at the clothes of the character between the different different frames it's like one has a tie one doesn't have a tie they're generally blue the dress that the character is wearing but it looks different across different different frames but that should be solved like i'm i'll be very surprised if that's not solved a year from now and it should be solved in video as well once they find a way for you to extract information out of an existing frame and put it into a different generation without using text in between yeah i think if they the moment they solve it in images it's only a matter of time before um they solve it in video i have a question for you though um and this is a real question right like a real world question not a hypothetical question would you use sora for any of your ad shoots right now assume it is available tomorrow i have already been thinking about it and i've already like i've been talking to my co-founder about this um almost every other day okay the imp- the problem arises with consistency in some form needs to be yeah. followed in the whole creative and that's the part that i just asked you about which is that's not been solved yet for example i think if you told me to market a pharmaceutical drug using that blue alien i'll figure out a connection i'll figure out a way to write a script and i'll figure out a way to generate visuals of blue alien doing this blue alien doing this blue alien guy doing this blue alien guy doing this but in each of these generations the blue alien guy is going to be different so it's yeah. hard to tell a story yeah that's what i mean by frame to frame consistency right it's still not solved as much as you know there's been so much phenomenal progress the alien in different frames is going to be different especially in, across different generations is going to be different but assume that was solved then would you use it yeah then you can do a lot of stuff if consistency is solved dude if if you solve for consistency you're solving for storytelling because storytelling is nothing but character building and if you can make one character do xyz you're telling a story so if you can at least have consistent characters that look similar mm. like this is why audio books work right because the voice is the same in of the character you can give a character a voice and you can have it have the same voice so i don't even need visuals to tell a story so if i'm mm. telling a visual now imagine an audio book where one character's voice that it's imagine this character is of a soldier in scene 1 mm. soldier sounds like me in scene 2 it sounds like a girl in scene 3 sounds like something else you just won't be able to feel any emotion towards that one person because feeling any kind of emotion requires you to requires there to be consistency in the thing you're feeling emotion towards and i think that's what that's what's missing right now what about control i'll explain what i mean like you had this i'm i'm going back to the johnny sins ad because i think everyone's seen it there's one thing where she jumps off the the thing and then he jumps behind her right you need so much control for that scene like you want specifically where it jumps specifically how the camera angles go which you won't have that much level of control with ai mm. not yet i won't mm. have that much level of control but if you give me character consistency i'll be able to write around it like if mm. I, if 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 i was able to generate johnny sins type character and we sing type character but if i wasn't able to generate this scene i'd be like mm. it's okay this this combination is what i want to do other scenes with 
you will work with the limitations that exist yes. right now there right AI. now the limitations are too many but i am okay to work around some but if it, if it's too many then it's hard to tell a story yeah but stock footage you agree would get sold like if, if right now because if you're if you're anyway using like a pixels or something for stock footage and you have this i think this is pretty good for stock footage you want to show like some trees or some museum or something i think it's pretty much sold yeah stock footage is done it's done so i don't know if shutterstock or uh, getty have collaborated with open ai cuz they are done effectively cuz once i have once i have sora i don't need them um so yeah so i i can write scripts around stock footage stuff if you can write scripts around stock footage stuff but again no character consistency so ha if sora can generate motion graphics which is just like oh this blue colored blob explodes on screen and it creates a it creates a wide array of vibrant colors exploding in the sky that eventually form a word that says varun logo animations logo animation that shit is also absolutely useful and killer um mm. imagine if i could feed music and say animate it animate it to this music animate the words x y and z that match cut to the beat of this uh with each beat the camera moves closer and closer to the word yeah i think you can do some of this logo animations at least maybe not the audio part yet but you can do logo animations with animate diff so you're right uh and even i agree that i think character consistency is the most important thing uh you know one more thing that was solved kind of accidentally or because of a combination of ai tools was you can actually make sora characters talk yeah right so it's a combination of a bunch of different Yeah like now. Yeah I think I agree with you that character consistency is like the most important thing like if there's character consistency I would use it like all the time I agree I think I and You want to know I hope they don't solve it quickly <laughs> Why? for at least 10 years I don't know I just want I just want to just you know lead a good life until then <laughs> <laughs> You know what is another really cool use case of Sora which I thought was the more important thing but like everyone forgot about it Sora can sort of emulate games or generate games right so this is my minecraft thing it's on slide 3 so it says i'll read this out sora is able to simulate artificial processes one example is video games sora can simultaneously control the player in minecraft with a basic policy while also rendering the world and its dynamics in high fidelity these capabilities can be elicited zero shot just without any prior examples by prompting sora with captions mentioning minecraft and and this piece ends with uh this is a promising path towards the development of highly capable simulators of the physical and digital world you know i was just thinking right i was talking to my team i was like how does this actually play out because i haven't been able to play with any of this yet right but the idea we got was that or what we understood from this is you can generate minecraft and then you can send it a prompt saying what if the character press the w button w as we all know in games is like to move forward right uh and what sora would do is it would generate the next few frames of what would happen if the character moved forward including all the weird stuff of oh, maybe an enemy came in when you move forward what would happen if the character pressed s which is to go backward right it would generate it and i don't know who said this i think it was somebody from nvidia if i'm not wrong that in the future most games will be generated not rendered you're streaming video through and through or you're generating video through and through you move forward in a game is generating the video of what would be like if the character move forward it's just that is like it's like it's insane it's basically the machine's imagination of what would happen based on your prompt like that is absolutely insanely immersive every single person will have and now combine the, fuck what on my mind is being blown now combine this with neural link okay where yeah. if if gpu if you can plug your brain's thoughts to a gpu and something renders itself based on what you think it would be like when i when i walk yeah. behind this door and and on twitter the general narrative was that actually for uh, something like sora to do this it needs to have an understanding of physics or at least it needs to be able to model physics well understanding one be a very strongly used word here which is that for you to press w and for it to know what happens next it needs to understand a little bit of physics it needs to be able to model the world and model a little bit of physics right because it needs to keep the character consistent it needs to make sure if a bird comes in the shadow the bird is accurate right all of that stuff so it's understanding the real world and after this like i used to always think this is a very weird fringe thought and i think i'll just say it that this might not be true or accurate it's just something i believe i thought if we live with 
might be living in a game engine, right? Because it, it seems a lot like, you know, what you do in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine, for example, with light, you have something called ray tracing, which takes a photon and makes sure and figures out how it bounces and then renders the frame, right? And the real world seems the same. But with Sora, it kind of confused me. I'm like, actually, you don't need an entire game engine. You can sort of generate the world instead of rendering the world. And it has so many implications for physics and for our understanding of nature. And this is unfalsifiable. What in science, un not falsifiable means you can't test this. There's no way to test this and be like, yeah, this is exactly how the world works. These are all theories and, you know, we die not knowing whether these theories are true or false. Um, actually, these are hypotheses. In, the, in science, the word is hypothesis, right? For something that you're not sure of. Theory means you've already proved it. Uh, but it is interesting, right? Like it is interesting for you to sit with a cup of tea in like the middle of nowhere and be like, well, what are we really made of? Is it just generating everything we see and all our actions that we do is sort of, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting thing to think about. <sighs> I did not think Sora would make me this existential, but here we are. But fuck, real, like real time generation of worlds is too exciting. It's too exciting. Now you plug it into your oculus or you know vision pro and you're actually standing and when you walk it generates real time now you combine that with you know imagine if you're able to feed it visuals of a world you want to live in and then it just further predicts what that world would be like that's too good it's super exciting you know the cool part is that right now games are i mean at least single player games are pre-programmed Right, which is you've written a script, you know, this character says this and then this happens and then these are the set pieces. Like these are the events that the player needs to go through to progress and then there's bosses that you fight. But with something like Sora, you can truly ask it to surprise you. Be like, give me a game and just surprise me. This is the theme, Wild Wild West. Surprise me. You don't know what the ending is. You can't spoil it for yourself. You have no idea what the twists and turns are. Uh, and you're playing it in VR, let's say. And it's generating a full 360 degree video for you. I think it'll be really exciting and a lot of people will immerse themselves into some of these games and you will find weirdly is that if the game is just too much fun like as in it's just only positive stuff you'll get bored right actually fun is the wrong word if it's just all positive stuff you'd get bored you want some of the negatives you want some of the struggles you want it to really feel like it's real right like it like it has consequences it has meaning if you get damaged in the game it should feel like oh my god you know how am i going to get out of this and the more I talk about that, right, and, and we've been having some of these conversations internally, just si simply. And the more I think about that, I'm like, well, if you could dream any dream, then why won't you dream this one? The one that you're in right now. And by the way, whenever I see the open AI employees tweet, like Rune and stuff keep tweeting, right? Uh, he tweeted something very similar. He's like something about, you know, some, something about dreams. So when, when the open AI employees have been tweeting like this, even Sam Altman tweets like this, they're like, it's just, it's just interesting. There's no way to prove whether you're right or wrong, but it's just an interesting place to be. Can you recommend some people to follow on Twitter, OpenAI employees? Rune is good. Sam Altman is good. Rune is like, uh, the reason I like Rune's tweets is because he's unhinged. Like usually when a company reaches a particular scale, their employees keep quiet. Uh, but Rune is just like... Spell his name. R-O-O-N. You know, what's an interesting thing? In every other field, right? For example, in biology, we will not read a textbook from 1800s because we like the scrap in there. Okay. With uh, physics, we will not read a textbook from 1800. We might glance over it, but we like what are the most modern things we have figured out. In every field, you try to figure out what's it. You, you try to read a textbook that's very, very recent, right? Especially in things like medicine. We know things evolve so quickly and our understanding of the body evolves quickly. The only field where people go read stuff from 1800s again and again is philosophy, right? There's nothing against it because theoretically philosophy is supposed to be Lindy, right? Which means that uh, these are timeless wisdom. Uh, this is timeless wisdom. Humans 200,000 years ago were the same. So it's the same behaviors now. But I still feel there's a section of philosophy which comes to understanding reality and the nature of reality, which is very, very close to science. And all the textbooks we still read on that are, in the, are set in the 1800s or 1900s. And Sora didn't exist at that point. So I think somebody needs to come out, somebody really smart needs to come out and say, well, here's philosophy of the modern generation. And we could be wrong about many of these things. But here are... 50 ideas, lateral ideas that you can go along a path of and, and figure out. That's why I love reading Doug, Douglas Hofstadter. Uh, that's why I love reading Max Tegmark because these people, even though they're scientists, they still have a very strong philosophical angle of 
that question of man's search for meaning, right? Where did we come from? Why are we doing this? Um, and I feel stuff like Sora really puts me back, puts all of us back into that mode of thinking, which is, is this all just like fake? Yeah, runes. Even Sam tweets like this existential shit once in a while, right? Like today, as of recording this right now, he has just tweeted, just now he tweeted, all of this has happened before and all of this will happen again. The hurricane turns faster and faster, but it stays perfectly calm in the eye. What the fuck does this mean? Scaling laws are decided by God. The constants are determined by members of the technical staff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's going to sound strange, but I feel at least for the people at OpenAI and everything with Ilya, right? He said, feel the AGI and all that. It, it must feel very religious. Because it is like, I mean, it sounds like a tool right now, right? But for many of them who are building this and seeing stuff like Sora actually happen in front of your eyes and seeing the rapid improvements in this, it kind of feels at least for them like the second coming, right? Like, okay, this is, this, this feels like, like a religious vibe, right? Like where... There's finally a God that will answer, respond back, look at you. It, it, it is able to model the world. It is able to understand what happens next. I imagine them in front of their computer screens and they just did something and it, they realized that, fuck, what did this just output? And they touch the screen of the computer like this slowly. <laughs> and then there's a little spark there. Whoosh, and they're like, fuck, like, God, is that you? <laughs> I can imagine yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I, I'm just really happy this is happening in my lifetime. Like, I don't know how much of this is true, how much of this is false, how much of this is wishful thinking, how much of this is actually real. But it's very exciting to be here. In fact, one thing Sam Altman says, and even Elon Musk says, right? Like, and Sam Altman said this recently, he's like, the entire idea of doing this is to, is to, the entire idea of living is, assume we are, we are in a simulation, then the goal would be to please the, or entertain the Brahman. Right now, that's a very religious take on things. And I don't think they're being as religious as they're tweeting. But it is whoever's simulating it or even if everything is just a simulation, uh, the best thing you can be is entertaining. Right. In fact, uh, if you solve everything for human beings, right, you solve food, water, shelter, everything, then the only thing we will seek is entertainment. Right. And that's why over the years, Tanmay, if you've noticed, you're an entertainer, right? Uh, the value of Tanmay has increased so much over the last decade. Partially because we've also solved a lot of things that are non-entertainment and now more people are seeking entertainment. The average person now spends like four to five hours in India per day sitting and watching video. They are consuming entertainment, right? And that's just going to increase over time as more of our things get done, as more of us either get universal basic income or, you know, have to work just one hour a week because AI is helping us do the rest. Uh, we will all seek entertainment. And it, if you really take that to the maximum, then entertainment is the only thing and then if you are in one of those simulations, then the best thing you can be is entertaining. That's what they constantly keep tweeting about. Uh, even Elon Musk says this. I don't know how true this is, but it is an interesting frame of thought. Hmm. Yeah, I Rune tweeted this, right? Make sure you are entertaining Brahman. This is, by the way, not the caste Brahmin. This is Brahmin, the word that says... Uh, the Brahma. universe. It's, yeah, it derives from the word Brahma. The creator, basically. Yeah, I don't know if they mean it in a truly religious sense. Like, I, I don't know if they mean it in a truly Hindu religious sense. And it doesn't matter. Right? Because what they're talking about is they're talking about... When Sam and Rune talk to each other, it fucking feels like a cult. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> it really feels like a cult. Like, yeah. make, he's Rune tweeted saying, make sure you're entertaining the Brahmin. And then Sam's like, where did you hear that? It is like, alt the Sam man. Like, they're all talking in this weird... <laughs> Dude, I just feel like they're having so much fun. Yeah, they are having fun wa literally watching the world transform. That's pretty envious and insane. And uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's pretty nice. Rune is a great yeah. follow. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to enjoy reading all his tweets. Yeah, I just hope he never changes. Because as you know, as companies become more corporate and they get sued and stuff, everyone becomes very... Very, uh, this thing. Whatever it is, OpenAI has just un unleashed so much onto the world of what to think, what to believe. Or actually, it's less answers, it's more questions, right? More questions about what, what is the future of a job going to be like? More questions around what is the future of uh, humanity going to be like? More questions around what is our meaning? It's just, if, it's, by creating this technology, they've introduced so many new questions for us to ponder on. I think philosophers need to write a modern 
set of philosophy textbooks and i'd love to read some of them hmm. anyway so okay <laughs> okay next thing next thing so let's talk about gemini 1.5 pro right tanmay we were talking yeah, about yeah go, going from really amazing tech in ai <laughs> to really awful tech in ai gemini 1.5 pro is good like this is the this is the te- this is the text one gemini i think this is the problem right like the image one was bad and we'll talk about it in a bit so gemini 1.5 has like a million tokens context length which means i can feed it an entire movie and be like what did you learn from this i can so there was a technique called retrieval right where i can feed uh, you know chat gpt an external data source and i can be like like chat with pdf and i'll be like well you know give me three i answer this question looking at this reference book or pdf or whatever you don't actually need to do that anymore right one thing i have learned like building so many of these small technologies and just being immersed in the spaces is don't get married to any technology because it can just become useless later like today you can just dump in the entire book into gemini 1.5 pro and you can be like give me uh answers right explain this explain that um in fact i'm fairly confident when this comes out this right now is only api access uh and you have to be on a wait list but i'm fairly confident you can dump in maybe 3 hours of tanmay bhat footage and say right like tanmay bhat and it would do a decent job let's first talk about how google fucked up which is image generation um image generation there are many many examples there's create racially diverse nazis and that kind of stuff people prompted in fact let's just show one of these on screen about how bad image generation was and right after that everyone's been ringing the death knell on google saying that google is just lagging behind and how um third this morning i woke up to see sergey in the google office talking to a bunch of engineers and he actually on video said that you know i think we messed up on on image generation on gemini so what is your take on where is google is gemini as bad as they say gemini image generation is bad i i find gemini text especially gemini ultra text generation pretty good like i think it's better than chat gpt at this point gemini ultra text Why? generation just cuz it can have more context no i think it generates it writes better like pros is good uh with G- gemini's ultra and we've been using it a lot for short form scripts right especially things where there's news and we just want to quickly cover it in short form especially my automated stuff it's gemini is great uh with the images dude to be very honest tanma you know how this happens right it's it's less a technology problem it's more a team and the people problem yeah organization problem yeah yeah like there was this one thing right and i, I try to avoid this but uh there was this one guy who said that he got fired he he got denied a promotion at google because uh he was a white man right and this is like i totally believe in diversity equality inclusion etc but i don't believe in performative uh you know inclusivity which is i will show the world that you know my team is extremely diverse like you want to be diverse like hire diverse people right you don't you don't need to do every everything is not theatrics to show the world but then when you're a public company you have to deal with some of this because people will complain any anyway right like about everything and i think the minute you start going there you stop thinking about the truth and i think we are finally in an era where you have to be extremely truth seeking to to get the right answers of everything right like there's no more place for to 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 pursue something that's not the truth because customers want the truth especially with ai So I think it's a team issue and I think this is such a big problem right because in teams especially when you grow an org and now we're close to 100 employees right when you grow the org there's certain things certain people that you cannot remove because they're very useful to the company but their thoughts and their ideals do pervade the technology or whatever you build it becomes like their dna kind of gets embedded in what they come out with right and you really need them so you can't really fire them and also they built like a cloud right like so you if you fire them then you lose another 20 very important people and it slows you back it it puts you back you know months um but you face some of this like what do you think like how do you think google should do better i mean that is i mean my opinion on how google should do better and or you know whether i think they will is irrelevant and i am nobody to suggest but i do think that i do find it interesting that a lot of people have come out to now right sundar off um people are calling him a peace time ceo etc 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 that i'm not enjoying um 
Like, I, I even when Parag, Parag was being thrown under the bus at Twitter, I wasn't enjoying that. It just, it just doesn't seem, seem nice when something like that happens. But I am excited to see Sergey come back uh, to Google and really get into the, get into the meat of, you know, it's like going down to the engineering room and actually sitting and figuring that stuff out. Yeah, like I told you, it's, a, it's now a religious war. It's a religious war. And my God is greater than your God is what everyone's going to fight for. Yeah. I just don't think you can count Google out. It's just like, it's fucking Google. Like you just, you just don't, you, they have the most amount of data they have. And they were the pioneers of this. DeepMind began this whole thing. So you can't, I don't think you can count them out. But then again, I don't know. What do I know? I don't know much. You know, Balaji, your Balaji Srinivasan had a very good tweet. Okay. And this is a crypto related tweet. But he's like, crypto actually follows forking, like a forking philosophy, exactly like many religions of the past. Okay, I'll give you an example. You have Bitcoin, you have Ethereum, and then you had Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, right? And that was just two different camps with two different viewpoints. And then I'm sure there'll, there'll be multiple folks of that. Uh, with religion, it's sort of the same, right? You had Christianity, and then you had two branches of Christianity, one that really believed in the Old Testament, one that believed in the New Testament. And then you had, you know, multiple branches of that, right? Even in Hinduism, we have so many different micro segments that believe in slightly different things. I think it's going to be like that with AI, especially open source AI, right? With Llama 2 is like daddy. It's like the original progenitor. And then you have a bunch of companies that say, well, I'll take Llama this side and another bunch that says, no, 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 that's not the truth. This is the truth. I'll take it this side. And even though Google obviously is not using Llama as base, uh, I still feel like there'll be some people who are part of that camp who believe this is the, this is the right, this is the truth. And there'll be a different camp that think this is the truth. That's why I keep saying this is this looks exactly this feels exactly like a old school religious war, right? A tribal religious war. Uh, and I think I I think the people with money and the customers, because there's also a commercial angle to this. I think the customers will really care about whichever side goes towards the truth or what they believe in. It is going to be hyper segmented, no? Yeah, I think eventually it'll be choose your AI, choose your god, choose your god. Um, and it's possible yeah. that most people will probably interface with many gods for different, different things. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that all gods can uh, agree upon is that customer is king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good No, I think some will it. not, I think some will not care about that. Some, especially some of the open source will be like, Hey, we believe in this on complete, like there are now open source models are completely uncensored. They're like, Hey, we believe that any sort of form of censoring, any form of. Dude, uh, how have know, we, we've managed to commoditize God? Like, can you, isn't that bizarre? It's, this is like peak of capitalism, which is that we've <laughs> invented a thing that can do anything and you can have any version of this for anything that you do. Like it's, uh, it's blowing my mind. Yeah. And the question you really, the, the decision you're making, choosing these AIs is not price, right? It is, what is your version of the truth? Do I like you? Do I like the company? Do I believe the company is telling the, my version of the truth? Because what I've realized over the years and this Facebook Papa keeps getting belted for this, right? Which is, oh, you're not taking a stance on misinformation or disinformation. Well, how should they? Remember the COVID vaccine, uh, not vaccine, the COVID the lab leak theory? For two years, everyone scrapped away content around the lab leak saying, hey, that's, that's bad. We shouldn't say that's bad things about That's racist as heck. Yeah, that's racist or whatnot. And then two years later, there was evidence saying, oh, and the thing is, I'm sitting here, I have no idea which is what is true, what is false. I to believe you put all the content and people should be able to decide. Everyone should be able to put up their evidence and then we should be able to decide. But then I've also realized it confused the hell out of normal people to have both sides of an argument put in front of them and somebody not making a decision for them. With AIs, it's like you're not seeing all this content. Somebody's made the choice for you that when you ask this question, I'm going to show you this content. Man, and Zuck is a beast. He's 39, bro. Remember, he's 39. He has the next like 40 years to just keep keep doing this shit. And he's one of the only companies really focused on VR and AI. So if you're really thinking like a ready player one world or like a, a sword art online world, he has the best shot of doing both the things because he owns the hardware. It's cheap enough. He's and winning he's, at, out the he's winning at everything. The dude is fucking fighting at MMA, becomes a meme the next day, eats at McDonald's the next day, wears a fucking Indian outfit at a Desi wedding the next day. He's an influencer now. He's an influencer of a different level, like so impressive. I'm making videos on Zap.
when i grow up i want to be zuck dude remember this dude was so hated like 3 years ago 3 yeah. years ago yeah mad impressed so tanmay vercel has launched something called v0.dev where you can generate uis on the fly so let's try one of these let's go to v0.dev and let's type generate a landing page for a community platform now i've built a community platform before so let's see how it does this and does it show you happening does it show you making it it's generating it at this point so i'm looking at it features pricing about join the community okay the sign up page okay this st- this start choking these are all very tiny pages yeah but pretty good is generating the structure let's try us generate the landing page for an indian payments company generate the dashboard for an indian payments provider company oh it can generate like dashboards and shit also yeah and how much can you customize it let's try that out it seems to be generating more structure than design uh it's also giving you the code for it which is very useful so not bad dude showing you the total transactions active users recent transactions it's not done any of the designs just give me like a wireframe type and system can, black can and you, white yeah can you design though can you add color and logos and that kind of thing you will most likely have to oh wow i can actually click on in oh i can't click on any of this yeah you you will most likely have to style it yourself uh so it's going to be three options a b and c wow c looks really good yeah, look at really this good yeah pretty good this home transactions users reports the total transactions active users uh, actually go go to go to graph. b i like b for the nice touch do they use the rupee logo uh that's mm. a nice touch total revenue because i said have. indian payment no yeah 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 that's pretty that's pretty cool yeah but there's still dollar here yeah Yeah this is getting better. Um this is getting better. And I like the graphs. We made really nice graphs. Yeah, even though I mean they kind of don't make sense right now but it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a very good template to get started with, no? Yeah, and tell me aren't these kind of templates like already readily available in the market? They are, but you some of them you'd have to pay for uh you have to find it Now it's just like you can have a ver- a very specific prompt and at least it saves you a bunch of time. Like how much uh, how much time would a front end engineer take to to make this? See, any front end engineer will know how to build this. It'll just take them maybe like a few hours. Now you generate in a few seconds and you've gotten the code, right? Tell me how so much I, can you customize this? Can I customize this further? Yeah, you can probably customize this. I download the code and then I go through the CSS and I'm like suppose very crude example that total transactions I want to make the background of that blue. right i can change that so most likely it's using some framework at the back end something like tailwind and with things like tailwind you actually get themes right so you can go to google and you can just be like you know tailwind themes and you'll find like a bunch of decent themes right so you could use that or you know if you if you want to get in the weeds yourself and you don't like the width of these you know panels of these like the total transactions active users etc you can you can uh make it smaller right in css you can be like well i don't want it to span this many widths i want it to be much smaller than that So you can do that, and I think this is a good time saver, and I, I don't think it's going to replace, uh, you know, a front end developer or a designer. But at the same time, you know, and and I, I, I'm usually very careful about saying this on the internet because you know that's a very aggressive audience. But come on, we are generating video and we are generating, you know, a full game on the fly. Uh, it's only a matter of time till some of this gets. reasonably automated these are much simpler problems but for an open ai it might not be the most high priority problem because they're going after let's regenerate reality yeah very interesting episode very slightly philosophical not our usual style but i liked it yeah some people will be excited some people will be depressed by the end of this either way hope you enjoyed it hit that like button subscribe and see you guys in the next one bye